For this video, we're going to start looking at transformations. So to start with, what is a transformation? Well, a very technical definition is in a plane, a mapping for which each point has exactly one image point and each image point has exactly one pre-image point. So that's a lot of words that you may not know yet, right? But really a transformation is just moving, right? You're t changing your original shape to get a new one, whether you move it in the uh, plane or you change the size of it, you are changing it from its original spot, its original shape. We're going to look at four different transformations. The first one, a translation, right? A translation is the same thing as sliding something. Then we're going to look at reflections, same as flipping, rotations, same as turning, and dilations, whether your shape grows or shrinks. Right now, you are in high school, right? This is a math two class, so we're not going to say slide, flip, turn, grow, and shrink. We're going to say translate, reflect, rotate, and dilate. All right, before we start looking at those transformations, we got to get a couple terms out of the way, some basics of these transformations. First one, pre-image versus an image, right? We saw these words in our definition for transformation. Okay, a pre-image is the graph of an object before a transformation, right? The key part is before. So your original graph, right, or the original shape or the original points, that's the pre-image, right? Whatever you start with before you do anything to it, okay? What happens after, right, so you apply a transformation, then you have an image, all right? So the image is a graph of an object after a transformation. All right, now if you think about it, say I have a triangle. All right, we'll say this is triangle A, B, C. All right, and I somehow transform. We'll say that I slide it. Okay, oh, not slide. We don't want to use slide. We got to use translate. All right, so I'm going to translate it. All right, and then I got A, B, C. Well, now, looking at my paper, I don't know which one I started with, right? I can't tell the difference between a pre-image and an image. We have to be able to differentiate between the two. And the way we do that, we have tick marks, right? So instead of having just A, B, C, oh, lost my mouse. I'm going to have A prime, B prime, and C prime. Just add a tick mark, right? And then you can keep adding tick marks every time you transform it. Right, so if I were to translate it again, then I would have two tick marks, A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, and so on. You have as many transformations as you do, that's as many tick marks as you have. All right. Some other ones, we have maps onto. Okay, maps onto, this is kind of important. You're going to use this a lot in this unit. All right, if I were to have my pre-image A at a point, Right, and then I transformed it, and I had A prime. Okay, the way we write it out is we say A maps onto, with a little arrow, A prime. All right, so we never really write out maps onto, but it's got a symbol, which is just an arrow. Okay, you do that for anything. You would say, uh, you know, triangle A, B, C maps onto... And then we have our A prime, our B prime, and our C prime. Okay, so whatever your pre-image is, it maps onto your image. All right, and then another term is an invariant point. Okay, an invariant point is a point that does not move after a transformation. All right, so it stays the same. Uh, so you, whatever you start with, you try to transform it somehow, and just based on where that point is and what your transformation is, it stays the same. That's called an invariant point, all right? Not every transformation you do will have one, and there are some transformations that will never have an invariant point, which we'll look at later in the unit, all right? So an invariant point does not move after a transformation. The last thing we're going to look at is an isometry, all right? An isometry is when the pre-image is congruent to the Im image. Okay, so your pre-image is congruent to the image. Now, what does it mean to be congruent? You've probably heard that word before. Congruent means it's the same shape and same size. All right, so it looks the exact same, 
after you transform it. That means it's an isometry. All right? There are four properties preserved in an isometry. Okay, so it's A, B, C, D. We got four properties. A is angle measure. All, right? All the angles have to be the same. So you, the angles you start with are the angles that you end with after your transformation. This is where the same shape comes in. Okay, if your angles are the same, it's going to have the same shape. All right, the next one is betweenness. All right, kind of a weird word, but betweenness means that if point B is between A and C when you start, point B is going to be between A and C when you end. All right, and just very similar to that is C, collinearity. All right, so inside collinearity, we see collinear. Linear is a line. All right, so that means that the points that are on the same line before you transform have to be on the same line after you transform. All right, and then the last one, D is distance. Okay, distance is where we get the same size. All right, the distance of everything you have on your shape has to be the same before and after. If your distances are the same, your shape is the same size. Okay, so the easier ones to remember are angle measure and distance. All right, so we get our same shape and same size from, and betweenness and collinearity, they're very similar. All right, and that is it for transformations.